Let's go, Metro Detroit. Start your engines. Woo it is ready or not. high noon in the Motor City. Lee Tom is sitting right next to Liz Lewin. You don't need to look I at mean, us. I'm sorry. Are we in Detroit? This is and a are beautiful we, where is that, shot Florida? of the Motor City, the Detroit River, the Rinsen. Take a look at the raceway. It is race day in Detroit. Grand Prix 2023, the Detroit Grand Prix, like it has never been before in 32 years. And 32 years ago, it was a different Detroit that we're showing off to the rest of the world. It was a different city, a different place, a different time. I don't even know if they had iPhones back then. How did they even communicate? <laughs> they didn't have iPhones back then. They did not have Snapchat. They did not have Instagram. I'll they did not have they, Lee they, Thomas they, and they Liz Lewis. <laughs> and they, they definitely did not have this course. You know, uh, all morning long, our entire crew, the nine, killed it. But just getting to walk around yes. and talk to yes. people, Lee, and to hear the pride in Detroiters' voice, and then to hear the excitement in visitors' voices yeah. about yeah. – what a great job the city did in planning. This is no small feat, by yeah. the way, okay? Uh, we're talking about a multi-million dollar industry that is mm -hmm. NASCAR and the Indy, and it's just a lot going on and so much fun. We got now, more this show, too. Now, talking about hanging out in downtown Detroit, it's very different. As you take a look right there, it's hard to understand what you're looking at. You are right under the Rinsen looking s towards uh, Gross Point. On Jefferson, that is Jefferson. It, that is the raceway. That is the raceway, and and right in that area. To be honest, you guys, today is free pre day, and mm -hmm. we, we keep wanting to reiterate that because this is such a welcoming, family friendly event. Grandstands one and nine, which are right past the run set, yep. are actually free to the general public uh, while seating lasts. And I'll tell you, Derek. Thank your boss, Mother Nature, because she brought some wind along with her, which is making it much easier for folks to come and go, Lee, and it's been a blast. Now, I think uh, the Corvettes were on the track earlier. I think Trans Ams <gasps> are on the track now. And yeah. what's happening, as you look at the 1.7-mile uh, raceway here uh, of the Detroit Grand Prix, is they are practicing for qualifying later on today. Now, there are different kinds of races that happen throughout the day and different race series. I think they said there's six race series that About are going to take place throughout this weekend, and they get practice, then they have to qualify, and then they each have their race times throughout the weekend. If it, you want to check the schedule, DetroitGP.com is where you'll find everything. Here's the thing. I want to note this, which is why this is super important. This is such a brand-new course, which means these drivers haven't even had a simulator to right, test this out. Right. Practice and qualifying, especially in downtown courses like this are super important everybody because without that how are they going to know where to drive yeah. what to do what yeah. to look at uh, my eyes keep going down because i want to see the map with all of you yeah. but again lee uh it's just so much excitement it so is excitement. excitement. It is excitement. Now, the last time the race was in the streets of Detroit, it was 1991. And it was 32 years ago before we have ever uh, had it in downtown Detroit. And you're looking at the very last race that happened here in 1991. It was Grand Prix 1982, Formula One, race through the streets of downtown Detroit before becoming the cart sanctioned race in 1989. The race moved back to Belle Isle in 1992. So uh, we're looking at the last time that we saw Indy cars on the streets, literally on the streets of Detroit. And now it is back in full effect. And just to give you some idea of what that means for the city, so many more people will be able to yep. take in the race for free. It's free pre-day today, but throughout the weekend, there are areas where it'll be free all weekend for people to come and enjoy the race. And also, uh, we had Roger Pinsky on earlier. Yeah, he listen. was talking about the amount. This is a nonprofit event. It's done for the people. It's yep. done for Detroit. And he was talking about how they had 30 sponsors when it's on Belle Isle. They have 70 sponsors now, so a lot more companies are and joining. And a lot of Detroit-based sponsors at that. We know yeah. Shindola is the official timekeeper as well. We're going to have a rep from them here on the show. But I think what, what I heard from a lot of people, right, mm -hmm. many of whom were at Belle Isle for many years, they said, you know, Liz, I don't even want to compare it. How lucky are we that we have options? Yeah. That we are on the world stage as a city, um, the Motor City, mm -hmm. doing racing. I mean, how cool is this? And it's very unique. The course is like no other. And there's one specific thing about the course. Bud Danker will give you an idea of what it means to have dual pit areas mm. on a street course. This is the only one in the world on our course today. Dual pit areas. Take a listen to Bud Danker, the chairman of the Detroit Grand Prix. A pit lane needs to be a thousand feet. Where do you find that in the city? Well, we found that at the Rensen in the parking lots that General Motors and Blue Cross Blue Shield uses. Now, the problem was there wasn't 1,000 feet of pit lane. We have 500 feet. 
So what do we do? For the first time ever, the fans are going to see a dual pit lane where cars will come in and some will pit to the right and some will pit to the left. At the end of pit lane, they'll all come together in a single file and find their way back to the racetrack. How? I'm sure they'll figure that out. Look, it's really just two pit lanes back to back. I mean, each is the same, you're just pitting on the right or pitting on the left. It's merely two pit lanes mirroring each other. So, so there you have it, and it's two pit lanes that mirror each other, which is unique for racers because you know when they take that pit stop, it's timed. They have specific things they have to do and a time limit because, of course, timing is all about racing. But when they come out of both of those pit lanes, they're going to meet. And how are you really going to cool. navigate that? And how are you going to make sure you do it the right way to be safe? And, of course, to be as fast as possible. I got the answer. That's why they get paid the big bucks. Yes, it is. Hey, I want to say this because you were talking about the yep. pit lanes. Uh, I had a really cool moment this morning because I saw two women working in the pit lanes and they both different teams nice. came out at the same time and I just wow. had a moment wow because when I looked up it was like really got at work I saw a little girl uh, and she was a spectator and uh, I just remember as a little girl I never really thought racing was right women. when Danica Patrick came on yes. the scene and yes. so many are the women now the leveling the playing field so to see women um not just in the pits but behind the wheels as owners it's just a really really cool time yeah so this race day is for everyone, everyone. internationally everyone in Metro Detroit it is a day for everyone to come down. And like we said, today is free, free day.